I am Bob Gale, co-creator, co-writer, co-producer of the Back to the Future trilogy and consultant for Telltale's Back to the Future game. I think it's great. What a fabulous idea. It's certainly timely. I mean, video games are hot and uh, this is great material. I mean, it should be, should be a lot of fun. I sat down in this meeting with the guys from Telltale and they were all Back to the Future fans. They loved the movie. They grew up as kids watching all three of the movies and they really were respectful of the material. It's great to finally get a game that looks like it's gonna be done the right way. To us, you know, focusing on the story and character is sort of the heart of the series, and, and I think that the adventure game format is perfect for doing a Back to the Future game. The story ta starts taking place about six months after Back to the Future 3, so it's all new material. So we open with this idea of like, what's Marty's life like now that Doc isn't around, his best buddy is gone. All of a sudden, the DeLorean reappears, Marty learns he's got to go back in time and find Doc, who's stranded somewhere. We've got some really good talent uh, that really gave some good performances. Fittingly kicked off by Christopher Lloyd. Great Scott! He just did a fantastic job and jumped right back into character. Kind of like riding a bike, yeah. Sorry about that, but it's so wonderful to see you. We have a lot of catching up to do. Telltale, casting is a really important part of our process, and getting Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd involved has been great to help sell the authenticity of the game. Michael J. Fox let us have the rights to his likeness for the character of Marty, which is great. When we found out that he wouldn't be available for voice recording, we had to set out and find someone who could do a really great Marty voice. We obviously had to find someone who could really nail it, and doing a sound-alike casting is difficult because their bar is set so high. When I was younger, I guess when I was going through puberty, I sounded a lot like Marty, and people would always say to me, you sound like, you know, that guy from Back to the Future. AJ had approached the company, and we're not exactly sure how it got where it got, but the MP3 ended up in my inbox. Doc, you gotta listen to me. The bruise, the bruise on your head, I know how that happened. You told me the whole story. So they sent me the, the, the casting sessions. I'm listening to this A.J. Lucasio guy, and I just stopped in my tracks. Yeah, I listened to it, and if I didn't know that this was not Michael, I would have assumed it was. Michael J. Fox is a hero of mine. Doc, come back! Doc! I've done a lot of, you know, student voiceover work, but this is, this is my first professional gig, and it's huge. Oh! <laughs> I never thought in my wildest dreams I'd ever be doing this. I mean, it was something that was kind of a joke when I was younger, like, hey, AJ does a great Martin McFly impression, and now it's something that, you know, I'm actually doing it for work. I get to say, you know, what the hell is a gigawatt? And it's, it's, no one's laughing at it. They're like, okay, good, let's record that. The beginning of production on this, or pre-production, was pretty exploratory in that, you know, we, we all had different ideas. How do we stay true to the license and do something completely new and interesting that not only works for people who might have seen the first film a long time ago, but who are also huge fans and know every line of dialogue. Everything from story, to the design of the characters, to the way we shoot the scenes, um, the cameras we use, the lighting setups, everything we try to sort of always ask ourselves, like, would, would this be plausible in a Back to the Future film? My main role actually as episode director is being the fan and trying to take every single aspect of the process and filter it through a fan's eyes so that when someone is playing this game who knows all the dialogue from all the movies, they're not going to be disappointed. Our game is, is a brand new adventure with Marty and Doc. It takes place six months after the events of the third film and now we're going on a brand new adventure with them that takes them through all different time periods, lots of problems. You as the player playing as Marty helping to sort of figure things out for Doc. One thing that's really great uh, that sold us all at Telltale on the season and on why we needed to make this game um, was 
the sort of backbone storyline for the whole five episode bit. And it was great when the designers started sort of throwing out ideas and asking questions of like, well, you know, what, what would Emmett have been like when he was younger? And we're all kind of like, oh, yeah, that's actually interesting. I'd like to explore that a little bit. Once you start with those interesting questions, then you get a lot of um, stories that come out of that, which are really appealing to fans. The usual. You lead a pretty unusual life, Doc. It's an unusual universe, Marty.